So what are the differences between a Rottweiler and the American Bully XL? In order to be able to determine this, we're gonna have to dive into the history of each particular breed. History. Action history. We must also compare them side by side. We will also look into the culture of each one of these breeds, as well as which countries are they mostly found in. Lastly, we're also gonna give you facts, irrefutable evidence, so you can make a determination if either one of these two breeds is right for you. The Rottweiler. A breed renowned for its strength and protective nature boasts a lineage dating back over 2,000 years, originating from mastiffs in the Roman Empire. These sturdy dogs actually accompanied legions on their way to invade present-day Switzerland, herding cattle and safeguarding them from predators and thieves. In what is now Rottweil, Germany, a pivotal center for livestock trade, these dogs became integral in everyday life. The city's name derived from its red roof tile. Bellies as ancient identity as Adia Flavia. Post-Roman Empire, Rottweilers earned their keep as indispensable working companions, herding livestock in butcher's yards and transporting meat laden carts to the market. The unique moniker Rottweiler Metzger or Butcher's Dog of Rottweil emerged when a drover responsible for moving livestock entrusted the dog with the proceeds from sales deterring potential robbers with its imposing presence. Over time, the breed evolved through crossings with other developing breeds, including the Greater Swiss Mountain Dog, the Bernice Mountain Dog, the Entel Butcher Mountain Dog, and the Appenzeller Senenhund. As the Industrial Revolution rendered railroads the primary mode of transportation, the demand for Rottweilers to haul heavy loads dwindled. By 1882, only one Rottweiler graced a dog show in Hellebron, Germany. Fortunately, dedicated fanciers recognized the breed's unique qualities, preserving it by selectively breeding the remaining Rottweilers scattered across Europe. The Rottweilers were all expanded during the 20th century when the German Police Dog Association enlisted them alongside other breeds as police dogs. They also found employment pulling carts and safeguarding properties. Recognizing their loyalty and bravery, people began appreciating Rottweilers as loyal household companions. In 1930, German immigrant Otto Denny bred the first Rottweiler in the United States, eventually gaining recognition from the American Kennel Club in 1931. The breed standard defined by the AKC underwent revisions in 1971 and then again in 1990. Notable breeders like Joan Clem played a crucial role in popularizing Rottweilers in the U.S. with the American Rottweiler Club, the ARC, forming in 1973. By the mid-1990s, the breed's popularity soared, making it the second most popular dog breed in the United States. Beyond their historical roles, Rottweilers have proven versatile in various activities, from police work to competitive dog sports, such as tracking, herding, agility, obedience, and rally. Rottweilers excel. Additionally, they serve as therapy dogs, bringing joy to people in various settings, including nursing schools, assisted living facilities, and residential agencies for individuals with disabilities. Rottweiler from Camden County is the top dog when it comes to therapy dogs. The American Kennel Club just named Axel the best therapy dog in the country this year. Axel and his handler, John Hunt, have traveled from their home in Blackwood, New Jersey to help after tragedies during the height of the pandemic. Axel also comforted patients whose loved ones were not allowed to visit them in the hospital. Axel. The Rottweiler's journey from ancient Roman herder to a multifaceted contemporary companion showcases its enduring appeal, strength, and adaptability across centuries and diverse roles. So we're actually going to be using the AKC or the American Kennel Club to grade the Rottweiler breed as a whole in general characteristics and traits. So the average sizes and life expectancy of the breed go as follows. Males are expected to be between 24 and 27 inches tall at withers and females are expected to be between 22 and 25 inches tall at withers. Males are expected to be anywhere between 95 to 135 pounds. Females are expected to be anywhere between 80 and 100. The life expectancy of this particular breed is 9 to 10 years. One must expect to see a large working dog whose build, above all, is functional. Therefore, the image projected is one of a dog of great strength, capable of exertion for long periods of time. All parts of his structure must fit harmoniously to achieve that end. As we examine the Rottweiler through this visual presentation, 
The ideal dog should be revealed by comparison and explanation. So as far as being affectionate with their family, now the scale that we're actually going to be grading each particular tribute is between one and five. One being the worst and five being the best. One being the lowest and five being the highest. So first trait, numero uno, affectionate with family. I will say I was very much impressed that the Rottweiler grades a five out of five, which tells you they can be lovey-dovey with their family. But wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't get carried away just yet. I must get carried away. Because the next thing that they're being graded on by the AKC is the Rottweiler good with young children. And in this particular tribute, they actually graded three out of five. Just keep in mind, even if they would have scored five out of five, you want to make sure you're still supervising dogs with children. Now, three out of five is not the worst score. It's not the best score. Not the worst, okay? He's not the worst. He's not the best. Next up is, are they good with other dogs? In this particular trait or characteristic, the Rottweiler actually scored again three out of five. Three out of five, the way I take it is, they actually do well generally, but there could be moments of friction. So real quick, let me just stop right here and say there's three colors that are actually recognized with the Rottweiler, as far as the AKC. That's black and rust, black and mahogany, black and tan. The Rottweiler is a short-haired black dog with clearly defined tan markings. Now let's continue with the breed traits and characteristics. So what type of coat do Rottweilers have? Well, immediately by just looking at the breed, you know it's a short coat and it's actually a smooth coat type. Now, when we go to the AKC grading of the Rottweiler as far as shedding, they actually get a three out of five. And that's where one would be no shedding and five would be hair everywhere. So they're at a three, meaning even though they're short coat, they do shed, but not to that point where you got hair floating around the air. The next thing that Rottweilers are graded on in the AKC is coat grooming frequency. And the score is from one being just monthly to five being daily. They scored a one out of five, meaning you only got to groom them once a month. And the next thing that they're being graded on is drooling. Again, one is less likely to drool and five is always have a towel. Don't forget to bring a towel. Okay. And Rottweiler scored a three out of five, meaning these dogs will drool. You may not always need a towel, but on occasion you probably will. Openness to strangers, one being reserved and five being everyone is my best friend. The Rottweiler scores three out of five, meaning they are somewhat friendly. They may be selective. And this type of score does not surprise me for a dog that could actually do security work. Playfulness level. One being only when you want to play and five being non-stop playing. The Rottweiler scored a four out of five. So even though they're not at the very top end as far as being playful, they are playful. On the watchdog protective nature, one is what's mine is yours and five would be vigilant. The Rottweiler scored five out of five telling you that this breed is vigilant. You must be vigilant. Whether it's a male or a female, they're gonna be on the lookout, they're gonna be looking around, making sure they know what they're surrounding. Adaptability level, one being lives for routine, and five being highly adaptable. The Rottweiler scores a four out of five. Doesn't surprise me, this is a very adaptable dog. As far as their personality, trainability level, one being self-willed, and five being eager to please. The Rottweiler breed as a whole scored a five out of five, which tells you this particular breed, not only very trainable, but they're eager to be trained. After selection, the real work starts. Training. An end towards which some people will go to any length. Now, as far as energy level, one being a couch potato and five being high energy, the Rottweiler scored a three out of five. So they're not necessarily going to sit around all day. They're also not going to be running around all day. On barking level, one being only to alert and five being very vocal. This breed scored one out of five. You ever heard that saying, dogs that bark don't bite? Yeah, this breed actually doesn't bark much and I'm pretty sure they would bite. Next up, mental stimulation needs. One being happy to lounge, and five needs a job or activity. A Rottweiler breed scored five out of five, which doesn't surprise me because this breed was actually made as a working line breed. So basically, they need something to do at all times for an activity to be involved in. Now, before we move on to the American Bully, I wanna share these particular health issues that actually afflict the Rottweiler breed. Now, keep in mind, before breeding, responsible Rottweiler breeders have potential sires and dams tested for health problems such as hip dysplasia which is nothing more than a malformation of the hip joint that can be detected via x-ray. Also, eye disease and heart conditions. Cancer sometimes occurs in this breed as it does with all other breeds. Now, something that actually caught my attention is with a PhD DVM by the name of David Waters of the Gerald P. Murphy Cancer Foundation has done research focused on cancer prevention funded by the Rottweiler Health Foundation. Dr. Waters has discovered that cancer and longevity are linked to a careful vaccination regimen, thus strengthening the immune system as well as keeping males and females intact until at least six years of age so if you have a vet 
for whatever reason, telling you to spay or neuter your Rottweiler before the age of six, you might want to read more on this particular study. So what are the recommended health tests from the National Breed Club? Hip evaluation, juvenile laryngeal paralysis, and polyneuropathy, JLPP, elbow evaluation, cardiac exam, ophthalmologist evaluation. Now guys, for those of you that own medium to large breeds, you know that multivitamins and joint support are pretty much essential. The way we've been able to sidestep orthopedic issues in my yard is using that multivitamins and joint support are pretty much essential. The way we've been able to sidestep orthopedic issues in my yard is using NuVet and New Joint DS. DS stands for double strength. We're going to go ahead and leave our order code right up here as you cannot get this product in stores and you do need an order code to be able to order online. But from helping hips, pasterns, overall health, even allergies, this is essentially our go-to. So what about grooming? What about it? Now I did tell you that they scored as a monthly. Yes you did. But there's more to it than just that. There's more. Keep in mind that the Rottweiler has a straight, coarse, medium length outer coat that lies flat. The undercoat is present on the neck and thighs. It should be brushed weekly and bathed regularly. He sheds only very moderately for most of the year, although he will shed more profusely twice a year, usually in the spring and fall. His teeth should be brushed and nails trimmed weekly. The use of a grinding tool such as a Dremel is especially effective in trimming the nails. I already know what you're thinking. What about exercise? Rottweilers love swimming, walking, and trotting, especially with their people. The breed is muscular and athletic and should have the opportunity to exercise on a daily basis. If there are jobs to do, Rottweilers learn easily to cart and are excellent workers in herding, tracking, and obedience. There is no limit to the canine activities that a Rottweiler can learn to do. Excess weight is not good for any dog, and exercise can help to keep your Rottweiler fit and healthy. Now, I do want to hit on this particular part because it is highly recommended for Rottweilers, and that is training. The Rottweiler must be trained starting early in his life. Leadership. Puppy socialization, basic training classes, and living in the owner's home are key to raising a well-mannered Rottweiler. Real important uh, is socializing puppies. By socializing your puppies, they're, they're, they become secure with their surroundings. By them being secure with their surroundings as puppies, they become secure with their surroundings as adults. Many people are very surprised, even shits on judges, when I go compete with two males and I let them both out of the crate at the same time. They're standing next to me and they're walking around with me. They're surprised that two males can get along. The dogs are very confident in their own self. Let me give you a brief history and overview of the American Bully breed. Now keep in mind, American Bullies actually are divided into four different classes. And from smallest to largest, they go like this. The American Bully Pocket, American Bully Classic, American Bully Standard, and the American Bully XL. For all intents and purposes, I will be talking about the American Bully XL as I feel size-wise, they're very comparable. Now the American Bully is relatively a new breed that was developed in the United States in the 1990s. It was created by crossing several breeds, including the American Pitbull Terrier and the American American Staffordshire Terrier with the goal of producing a friendly and loyal companion. Some breeding lines introduced other bully breeds and even non-bully breeds into the mix. The American Bully's origins are rooted in various parts of the United States, notably in Virginia and Los Angeles, California. But it has since spread across the country and can also be found in Europe and Asia. Often confused with the American Pitbull Terrier, the American Bully, also referred to as the Bully Pit and Bully Pitbull is unquestionably a distinct and separate breed. Not the same. What I'm gonna attempt to do is actually give scores to the American Bully based on the AKC grading scale. Now the AKC does not grade the American Bully as the American Bully is not recognized by that particular registry. So we're gonna give it our best shot. Go ahead and grade the American Bully XL based exclusively on my experience. So let me jump in into breeds and characteristics. Now just like the Rottweiler, we're going to grade from 1 to 5. And first up is affectionate with family. 1 being independent and 5 being lovey-dovey. I can tell you the American Bully is a 5 out of 5. The American Bully, irregardless how big or even intimidating as they may look to you, they love to spend time with the family and they love to be petted on and be lovey-dovey. So that would be a 5 out of 5. Good with young children. I would say the American Bully is a 4 out of 5. I feel that they do very well with young kids. But that doesn't mean that you should not be supervising. It also doesn't mean you're gonna let your kids go ahead and jump on the dog and treat the dog like a horse. But with all that being said, they're great with kids. Good with other dogs. One being not recommended. And five being good with other dogs. I would say the American Bully is a four out of five. The American Bully in general gets What colors are allowed? What color are they? by the ABKC, which is the American Bully Kennel Club, which is actually the first registry to recognize the American Bully back in 2004. I'm gonna go ahead and read exactly what it says. All colors and patterns are permissible except the pattern merle or slash blotched 
per competition. Basically, all colors are allowed and Merle's a disqualifying fault as per competition. For some reason, I think that'll change. But let's continue. Next up is shedding level. One being no shedding and five being hair everywhere. I would say the American Bully Excel sheds about a four. Even though it is a short haired coat, you'd be surprised how much an American Bully XL can shed. Next up, coat grooming frequency. One being monthly and five being daily. I would say it's about a two out of five. I say that because I feel like every two weeks at least you should bathe your American Bully. And just like the Rottweiler, they do have a tendency to shed more during the spring and fall seasons. And that's both in preparation for the summer and preparation for the winter. Drooling level. One being less likely to drool and five meaning you always need to have a towel. I would say the American Bully is about a three out of five on this one. They typically drool when they're hot or if you're eating something like right next to them. I've also heard that American Bully XLs will drool whenever they feel nervous. But all in all, a three out of five. Next up, openness to strangers. One being reserved and five, everyone is my best friend. I would say the American Bully XL as a whole is a four out of five. I would say the great majority of the dogs are very easygoing and they want to make friends with everyone. In fact, some will take it a step further and demand that humans that are around actually pet them. Every now and then, you're gonna get one that's a little bit more reserved, but this breed was actually bred to be companions. So they do have openness to strangers, which doesn't make this breed particularly good for security. Next up, playfulness level. One being only when you want to play, and five being non-stop. Now I will tell you, this breed can score five out of five, especially when there's another American Bully XL around. They will either play chase, grab a stick, do whatever to keep the good times rolling. Next up, watchdog or protective nature. One being what's mine is yours, and five being vigilant. I would say the American Bully is a two out of five. I just told you, their openness to strangers doesn't serve them well for security. That does not mean that they will not protect you if you're in harm's way, but they're just not naturally vigilant and looking around at their surroundings. Next up, adaptability level. One would be lives for the routine, and five would be highly adaptable. And this one kind of causes a bit of, I don't know, it's hard for me to actually grade this one. So I'm gonna give the American Bully a three out of five. And that's because the American Bully is adaptable. However, the American Bully needs a routine. So, irregardless what it needs to adapt to, it needs a routine to go along with it. So, it'll adapt to whatever environment, but that daily routine is what keeps everything together. Trainability level. One means self-will, and two means eager to please. The American Bully in general is a breed that wants to aim to please, but every now and then, they could be stubborn when it comes to training. So long that you keep training sessions to no more than say five, maybe 10 minutes at most, the American Bully would do well, especially picking up basic commands, such as sit, heal, stay. Now, I'm not a trainer, so I can't give you anything past the basic training. I'm gonna go ahead and grade the American Bully a four out of five. Energy level. One being couch potato and five being high energy. Because the American Bully has had the prey drive, I would say the American Bully is not the highest energy dog out there. Just because it can't be a security dog doesn't mean you can't take him on a hike or that he can't run or do anything. So I would say the American Bully is three out of five. With that being said, if you just sit at home with an American Bully, they will become couch potatoes. So you gotta be very careful with that. Just get all fat and sassy. Next up is barking left. One meaning only to alert and five meaning very vocal. I would say the American Bully Bully's a three out of five. Now they're not the most vocal breed out there as far as barking. They are definitely vocal in other ways. They make sounds and whatnot. But they will bark, especially if somebody knocks on the door or even outside, but they will bark. And if there's a dog on the street over or Lord forbid next door barking back. The American Bully may not be the dog that's gonna back down from a barking line. Mental stimulus need. One, happy to lounge. Or five, needs a job or activity. This one in particular, I think goes tied to energy level. American Bullies, like many other large breeds, do very well when they have a daily job or activity to do. Now, we already said the American Bully XL may not be the best security dog, so you're not gonna have it guarding something all day, like maybe you would with a Rottweiler. However, if you get into a routine of, say, going hiking or walking the dog on a daily basis, or just general exercising, the American Bully XL will take this very well. And I've noticed it makes them very sharp. Now, the other side of the coin on this is that a lot of American Bully XLs could be happy to lounge if you let them. So it's important to just keep them active. What are the health issues that actually revolve around the American Bully XL? Just tell me. There are seven that are the most common. Hip dysplasia, which is a condition that actually involves improper development of the hip joint 
which can lead to arthritis and mobility problems. One of the things we found is that if you keep puppies off of a smooth or slick surface, the probability of hip dysplasia actually goes down. So placing, say, a little rug or a little mat so that they could actually have traction will actually help reduce this possibility. Next up is elbow dysplasia, and it's a developmental disorder of the elbow joint, potentially causing lameness and pain. That's why it's important that you have a multivitamin or joint support for whatever type of joint or orthopedic issues. That's why we recommend New Vet and New Joint Plus so that you could combat this from the very beginning, nipping it in the bud before it becomes a problem. Next up, skin allergies. Some American bullies may be prone to skin allergies, which can lead to itching, scratching, rashes, and skin infections. If you haven't done so, make sure to check out this video as to how we actually make DIY shampoos in order to combat this very problem. Heart disease is number four on this list. Cardiac issues, including murmurs and valve problems can actually occur in some individuals in this breed. Number five is bloat. And this is nothing more than a life-threatening condition where the stomach can fill with gas and will twist on itself, cutting off blood supply to vital organs. Six, hypothyroidism. Some American bullies may develop an underactive thyroid gland, and this can lead to various health issues. Number seven, eye problems. This particular breed can be susceptible to certain eye conditions, such as cataracts or even cherry eye. Now, let me just go over this, which is very pertinent to this particular breed. Caring for an American bully involves various essential aspects to ensure their well-being and contentment. Providing a nutritious diet tailored to their age and activity level, along with access to fresh water, is crucial. Regular exercise, such as daily walks and playtime, keeps them mentally and physically stimulated. Early socialization and consistent positive reinforcement based training help them become well-adjusted and obedient companions. Routine veterinary checkups, vaccinations, grooming, and dental care are necessary to monitor and maintain their health. Ensure their safety with a secure yard, proper identification, and protection from extreme weather conditions. Above all, shower your American Bully with love, attention, and companionship to nurture their affectionate nature and ensure their happiness as a cherished family member. One thing I like to compare so you have an idea as far as each one of these breeds what their puppies go for. Rottweiler puppies typically will run anywhere between $2,000 and they could go all the way up to about $8,000. It all what? depends on their registry and also their lineage. American Bully puppies on the other hand can run you anywhere between $2,000 all the way up to $20,000. Well a god Snikes. Sometimes even more. Remember I mentioned that American Bullies have four different classes. The highest prices of these classes I would say is probably the Pocket Bully. But since we're talking about the American Bully XL, I would say typically they'll run anywhere between 2000 upwards to about 10 k depending on the patterns, colors, and everything else.